One Zambia, One Nation. Good evening and welcome to the news at 19 hours. I'm Ingutu Himanji and the sign language interpreter is Loveness Simbeye. The headlines. President Edgar Lungu says Zambians remain indebted to the Chinese government for its continued assistance. Sahrawi Arab Republic, Democratic Republic President Brahim Ghali is in Zambia for a working visit. Government has dispersed over 70 million kwacha to 375 livestock cooperatives in five provinces. And the criminalization of the High Court for the year 2017 has opened with a colorful ceremony. And now the news in detail. President Edgar Lungo says Zambians remain indebted to the Chinese government for its continued assistance. President Lungo says Zambia has continued to benefit from the relationship with China through assistance and investments. The president says Zambia has so far recorded over 5 billion US dollars of Chinese investment from 320 companies that have created over 5,000 jobs. The president was speaking today when he held talks with Chinese Minister of Foreign Affairs Wang Yi at State House. The president disclosed that it is for this reason the government has started implementing projects under the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation FOCAC summit, which was held in Johannesburg, South Africa, in December 2015. Meanwhile, President Lungu has invited Chinese President Xi Jinping for a state visit to Zambia at the convenience of both leaders. The president says the Chinese leader's visit to Zambia will further cement the two countries' relationship. President Lungu also says government is grateful for the support China has shown towards the construction of a conference center in Zambia for hosting of the African Union Summit in 2022. You are most welcome because we appreciate you as People's Republic of China, Chinese people. Uh, the two countries uh, have been very close for a long time, even before independence, as we struggled. Mm -hmm. So we consider you a very good friend of Zambia. Mm -hmm. uh, we have shared a lot of history from the struggle, as I've said. Our friendship being based on equality, mutual respect, and understanding, which is evidenced by historical developments, the struggle for freedom by the Zambian people, eventually emancipation, and then support by way of cooperation and trade. Uh, we appreciate that China played a big role in supporting Zambia's uh, liberation struggle and the, the support contributed to the freedom which followed in the region because when Zambia became free, Zambia continued helping out others in the region. Uh, the people of Zambia will always remember China's selflessness. And uh, in this regard, we have um, specific things we can point to, such as the Dazara, uh, railway, which came at a time when Zambia badly, badly needed a way out to the sea. And the Chinese government has pledged to set up more solar milling plants to benefit small-scale farmers across the country. 
Visiting Chinese Minister of Foreign Affairs Wang Yi says setting up milling plants will enable small-scale farmers effectively contribute to the country's food security. Mr. Wang adds that China will collaborate with Zambia's agriculture sector players to promote crop diversification among farmers in the country. He says Zambia has favorable weather for various crops. Mr. Wang was speaking at a media briefing in Lusaka last night. And Minister of Foreign Affairs Harry Kalawa said Zambia will continue treating China as a strategic partner in order to foster development. Mr. Kalawa said this is why Zambia has created a conducive working environment to attract more Chinese investors. Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic President Brahim Ghali has arrived in Zambia for a working visit. President Ghali landed at Kenneth Kaunda International Airport at 15 hours. He was welcomed by Minister of Foreign Affairs Harry Kalaba, Lusaka Province Minister Jafin Makalombe, City Mayor Wilson Kalumba, Defense Permanent Secretary Stadi Mwale, and Information Permanent Secretary Godfrey Malama. President Ghali will be in Zambia for three days. President Edgar Lungu will use the occasion to learn more about the challenges in the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic. Zambia, as part of the AU Security Council, will look at enhancing peace in that country. President Ghali is expected to hold private talks with President Lungu at State House. He will later pay a courtesy call on First President Kenneth Kaunda before departure on Wednesday. Minister of Housing and Infrastructure Development Ronald Chitotela says there is need to effectively maintain the $355 million Millennium Challenge account water and sanitation project currently being implemented in Lusaka. Mr. Chitotela says water remains a major threat to current infrastructure development projects such as roads. Speaking when he led a delegation of four ministers and Lusaka mayor on a, a tour of the project, Mr. Chitotela said government is committed to improving the welfare of Zambians through projects being financed by the U.S. government. The minister has also revealed that another project worth $285 million U.S. million by the Indian government will soon be implemented meant to decongest Lusaka. And Minister of Local Government Vincent Mwale says the Lusaka City Council needs to ensure effective maintenance of the huge investment whose implementation comes to an end in 2018. Meanwhile, Lusaka Province Minister Jafin Wakalombe has appealed to Lusaka residents to take full ownership of the project and safeguard it. And Millennium Challenger Count Zambia Chief Executive Officer Pamela Walia said the project will benefit 1.2 million people. Investments uh, which we are putting up in infrastructure development, if it is not well managed, all the all the investments will go to waste. As you may be aware, the greatest uh, danger to the road network is water. So we need to provide for proper drainage system so that water does not in city stagnate on our roads. Otherwise, if we allow that, we'll soon be seeing roads developing serious potholes. We should thank the American government for committing so much money to invest in, uh, in this sector, as you say, which has not seen investments in a long time. But I think for us to optimize on the benefits that we should get from this, inve this investment, um, the council has to play its part. What, what we have seen is a creation of the, the main drains. Uh, bigger drains that you know will be able to drain water from from Osaka and so on all the way to wherever the water will end up. Chief Kalasa Lukangaba of the Ushi speaking people of Mansa has urged members of parliament in Wapula province to remain united in order to foster development. Chief Kalasa Lukangaba was speaking when Mansa Central MP Chitalu Chilufia called on him at his palace this morning. Joyce Yatobe reports. Just a few meters from the old palace belonging to Chief Kalasa Lukangaba of the Ushi speaking people of Mansa stands this new structure. Chief Kalasa Lukangaba is one of the traditional leaders that have taken it upon themselves to build their own palaces. Apart from this development, the Luapola province traditional leader has embarked on planting about 600 pine trees just near his palace. 
All this came to light when Mansa Central Member of Parliament, Chitalo Chilufia, accompanied by Ministry of Health Permanent Secretary for Administration, John Moyo, paid a courtesy call on Chief Kalasa Lukangaba in Mansa this morning. The traditional leader wants members of parliament from Lopola province to work together. <laughs> Hello, Kabiri. Pama Minister Zabo Batupela. Muri bana bati fiari wa kuno kuntu. Muri shiba na mafia bena lo apula bati tamu. Ni mwe bena mwa ikala na kuno. Mwe bena mwa shiba na kishi wakuti refi refi wa ikwa. Ifuta kwa kuata. Kashi tule lombo kuti la mule tupose la kuama no sa na kupiti la mukui katana pantu. Idingiri inenga takuruku ikatana na nguna atufula ama ministers. Inga uyuale hivombe la yeka na uyueka takulebo kwa mpana kuhino. Nishi tukamisi inge hii opportunity batupede wa president. He also had other concerns which he wants government to address. Pamonga Frederick Chiluva University ya kukula sana chakuti abantu ali pushabali pushabali naka kuli na UB down e market i ida market mu province that we kwata po market i i sume ya ba mode i leyo abantu bale chetekero kwebati eyo twala kwata ya kutila abantu wonse aba ma district sa ali kana ali kana kutibaleisa parapantu nukuhombe lako. Eno kabilipali wa mungodi wakulu wapula. Wakuti abantu wabe ingepo wa sangi wa ama kwebo na ugunonshi wakuti vule leta vya mtanshi wakati kesu. Dr. Chilufia, who is also health minister, responded to the concerns. Kanshi within the next two weeks or so, malamuna activity kanavesa kuli the project. Chimbi kanavesa kuli FTJ University in the project. Chimbi kanavesa ni project ya down UB market. Project imoi kalambanga nshi ya tusakamani kwa wawonse. Kanshi kuli moku kanavesa konsu kutakuli kanflumende ya uli depo ichu moku ambo kula ili market. Kaflumende, wenu wawe tika chagolungo, kanawesa Mamba wali saavula, 5 million kwa cha kutila Kwa mbo, tutende kukula ila market Elo chimbi kanawesa, imisevo Uleole chitama urban roads, muma za China Sibo Kanawesa tuwa limpe la mapesa Ndala mashonse, isha lefai kwa in the amount of 25% Now he has received the total of 32 million kwa cha Dr. Chilufia, who was in Lopola province to check on the extent of damage caused by army worms and stock borers, which have invaded most parts of the country, also checked on a number of developmental projects. Joy Siatubi, TV2 News, Mansa. Lopola province minister Nixon Chilangwa has banned the holding of workshops outside the province because a lot of money is being spent on allowances Instead of poverty alleviation programs, Mr. Chilangwa is concerned that civil servants attending work workshops outside the province are drawing huge amounts of money meant for poverty alleviation in the area. The minister was speaking during a meeting dubbed Champions of Development for District Commissioners, Council Chairpersons and Council Secretaries. Mr. Chilong Chilangwa has observed that money from the National Treasury, which should go towards lifting people out of abject poverty, is ending up in the pockets of a few individuals because of what he termed as unnecessary workshops. He has since banned movements outside the province which are not approved by the provincial permanent secretary. The minister noted that government and council workers are quick to make budgets which cater for their subsistence allowances outside the province than working towards eradicating poverty. We now take our first commercial break. On the other side, you have agriculture news. Don't go away.
We continue with the news. Over 500 miners at Luansha Copper Mines on the Copper Belt have gone on an indefinite work stoppage after management at the Chinese-owned mine declined to award them a pay rise. Both the Mine Workers Union of Zambia, MUZ, and the National Union of Miners and Allied Workers, Dumao, have confirmed the work stoppage in an interview with ZNBC News in Quito today. Here is a report. They've been shouting and singing songs of protest since morning. These are workers of CNMC Ruansha Copper Mines who are demanding better working conditions. They've done tools to press for a 35% increase in their salaries. About 500 workers have not reported for work today. Our demands are, number one, we want salary increment of 35% of current basic. Yes, 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 yes. yes, 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 yes. We want regular supplement to be increased by 400 quarter across the board. We also want the education allowance to be introduced at 35% of basic. We also want the housing allowance to be increased to 35%, not the kind of that we are getting 35%. We want also asset allowance to be introduced at 25% of basic. Today, we have to pay for the fiat, but we have to pay for Increment to Abomba three years, no increment to Ajandanaba Union by President Varishi Kunova to Eva to Murandanaba Union, number by Union Tapario for Varet to Eva. But CNMC Washa Copper Mines feels the two mine unions representing the workers have not yet presented the demands for management after all. The demands that we have are the demands the unions have brought to the bargaining table, and that bargaining process is still going on. Um, the bottom line is the negotiations are still going on and the process hasn't been exhausted yet. And the local administration is hoping for an amicable solution. Uh, we are very much aware of what is uh, happening at uh, Luansha Copper Mines. And uh, I'm arrived to the fact that uh, uh, both unions from uh, Moose and Lumao are handling the matter. and. Uh, my only appeal is for both management and uh, the union to be magnanimous enough to bend a little bit so that uh, a win-win situation can be reached. Mine. Both the Mine Workers Union of Zambia and the National Union of Miners and Allied Workers have dispatched teams to negotiate with management. The unions have told ZNBC News that the workers' protest follows one Shakopa Mine's decision not to give the workers a salary increment. Poshala, ZNBC News in Wansha. Unions in the mining sector have opened talks with Concola Copper Mines, KCM management over improved salaries and other conditions of service for unionized staff. The resumption of talks between unions and KCM management for improved salaries comes after a one-year wage freeze at the firm. National Union of Miners and Allied Workers, Numao, Deputy National Secret Secretary Stephen Mwanga, says KCM unionized staff got no salary increment in 2016. Mr. Mwanga says KCM management opted not to reward its staff any pay rise in 2016 owing to turbulences in the extractive sector. He says talks between unions in the mining sector and KCM management will resume on Friday, January 13, 2017. Former PF Secretary General Charles Chimumbwa has endorsed President Edgar Lungu as the PF presidential candidate in 2021. Mr. Chimumbwa, who is also former Nchanga Member of Parliament, says President Lungu should be supported as he aspires to lead the nation beyond 2021. He said this in a statement released to ZNBC News in Lusaka today. Meanwhile, PF Lusaka Province Youth Chairperson Kennedy Kamba says the PF will go into the 2021 elections with President Lungu as the party's candidate. Mr. Kamba has since called for unity in the party, saying it is key to development. President Edgar Lungu talked about is uh, he offered himself to say he's available for 2021. He never imposed himself to say he's going to stand. He said. He is available for consideration by the party for 2021. I want everyone to understand this very clearly. We are talking about uh, uh, the things that uh, uh, people consider 
when they are looking at uh, a leader or when they're trying to choose a leader. One of the things that the uh, people look at is the ability. Has one got the ability to lead others? Or do we, uh, do we talk about ability before we look at an individual as a human being? What, is, what are the tenets of an able leader? What is it that constitutes leadership? And the PF leaders in various provinces have endorsed the candidature of President Edgar Lungu for 2021 presidential elections. PF Western Province Youth Chairperson Hornsley Mangwato says this is because President Lungu has demonstrated good leadership and the PF leadership in Southern Province has also endorsed President Lungu's candidature for the 2021 elections. PF Southern Province Youth Chairperson Dennis Chipoe says the leadership feels President Lungu is leading a winning team that needs no change. Meanwhile, the PF leadership in Luangwa district has also endorsed President Lungu's candidature. Luangwa PF district chairperson Yuni Mumba says President Lungu deserves to rule because he has demonstrated good leadership. And PF Northern Province Youth Chairperson Ronald Molenga says the leadership has endorsed the candidature of President Lungu for 2021. Mr. Molenga announced this in a statement to ZNBC News today, citing good leadership and commitment to unite and develop the nation by the president. Now, musician Fumba Chama, commonly known as Pilato, has apologized to President Edgar Lungu for the derogatory message he used against him in the run-up to the August 11 general elections. Mr. Chama says he is sorry for his actions which brought President Lungu's name in disrepute. The singer says his duty as a Zambian musician is to work with the vulnerable in the country but that due to his actions he was cut off from all lawmakers including the president. He was speaking this afternoon at a media briefing held at the PF Secretariat where he presented his case. And PF Lusaka Province Chairperson Horace Longwe said the ruling party is ready to work with anyone who wants to promote peace and development in the country. Mr. Longwe explained that Pilato is free to work with the PF. I'm here specifically to seek forgiveness, to apologize to the PF as a party, uh, the PF as a government, and to the head of state uh, His Excellency Mr. Edgar Chagwalungu and the family. I, this has been necessitated by my deepest desire to, to, to help the poor and the underprivileged in my, in my constituency, which is our country. This is uh, something which is a bit unusual uh, in the sense that uh, when we receive people, we receive them as defectors. But this one has purely come to apologize over um, whatever he has committed to the party and the head of state. Uh, our job as a province, I think, is to welcome him and take the message to the We break for our last commercials and we'll be right back. Stay with us. And now the rest of the news. The criminal session of the High Court for the year 2017 opened today at a colorful ceremony held at the High Court grounds in Lusaka. Minister of Justice Given Lubinda graced the occasion with a call on the judiciary to remain accountable, transparent and independent in the discharge of their duties. Matthews Musukwa was at the courts and now reports. Well, the High Court for the year 2017 for Lusaka province opened this morning by High Court Judge Nicola Shape Piri at a ceremony held at the High Court grounds in Lusaka. Justice Piri inspected the Guard of Honor mounted by the Zambia Police Paramilitary before leading the procession of judges to the courtroom for the ceremonial sessions. Minister of Justice Given Lubinda was the guest of honor at the event. It is such a regrettable for members of our society languishing in remand prisons for long periods due to the inability of the criminal justice system to handle their cases still. It is therefore our hope that all the stakeholders in the criminal justice system in our country shall this year enhance their efficiency in the disposal especially of criminal cases. I am taking particularly keen interest in checking the records of remand deeds. 
my lord, the acting chief justice, my ladies and my lordships, despite their much challenges, I wish to implore you, honorable members of the bench, to remain fully accountable, transparent, and independent in the discharge of your noble duties. Justice Piri highlighted the challenges and successes of the High Court and the judiciary for the year 2016. Despite the strides we have made in the recent past, the judiciary continues to experience numerous challenges in the performance of its mandate. There is, Honorable Minister, a significant increase in the number of civil and criminal cases being brought to the courts on an annual basis. In the year under review 2016, a total of 446 criminal cases were filed in the Lusaka High Court. Of these cases, 244 were disposed of and 202 criminal cases remained to be completed for the year 2016. Over the same period, Honorable Minister, a total of 3,630 the ceremonial opening of criminal sessions of the High Court marks the beginning of the court sessions for the year 2017. Matthew Zumsukwa for Zanis News in Lusaka. Ministry of Defense Permanent Secretary Stadi Mwale has praised the Defense Forces for their efforts in maintaining peace in the sub-region. Mr. Mwale says their works are a clear manifestation of Zambia's commitment to developing and fostering cooperation among defense forces. He was speaking this morning during the official opening of the 20th Command and Staff course at the Defense Forces College in Lusaka. Mr. Mwale says Zambia is laying a foundation for peace and stability through the inclusion of student officers from the sub-region and beyond. The 20th Command and Staff Course 2017 includes defense staff from Zimbabwe, Rwanda, Malawi, Kenya, and South Africa. Mr. Mwale, who has paid tribute to participating countries that have sent officers to attend the course at the institution, says the vision of the college is to continue producing quality officers capable of meeting emerging security challenges posed by the global environment. Augmented learning for our defense forces in the country. We therefore attach great importance to the activities and academic performance of each student officers. It is with a sense of pride and joy, and I wish to put it on record that the college has so far successfully produced quality officers. It is therefore the vision of the college to continue producing quality officers capable of meeting emerging security challenges posed by the global environment. The course you are about to embark on is intended to produce high caliber grade 2 staff officers who are supposed to assume high levels of command and staff appointments. The syllabus is tailored to international standards and compares favorably with any command and staff college worldwide. Burial for veteran broadcaster and media trainer Faxon Nkandu will take place tomorrow in Lusaka. Mr Nkandu's grandson Lucky Sichula has told ZNBC News that his grandfather will be put to rest at Lusaka's Memorial Park. This will be after a church service at the Kingdom Hall in Kamwala around 10 hours. Meanwhile, the Zambia National Broadcasting Corporation is saddened by the passing on of Mr. Nkandu, who died at his home on Sunday. ZNBC's Corporate Affairs Manager Masuzi Ndlovu says Mr. Nkandu, who has died at the age of 82, has contributed immensely to the development of the media industry in Zambia by training many high-profile journalists at ZNBC and other media houses countrywide. He says the veteran journalist will be remembered for his unique style of lecturing media law as attested by journalists at ZNBC and other media houses that he taught. The funeral of Mr. Nkandu is being held at house number 34 Loanja Street in Kamwala opposite the railway line. 
to end V19 Hours News, a recap of the stories making headlines. President Edgar Lungu says Zambians remain indebted to the Chinese government for its continued assistance. Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic President Brahim Ghali is in Zambia for a working visit. Government has dispersed over 70 million kwacha to 375 livestock cooperatives in five provinces. And the criminalization of the High Court for the year 2017 has opened with a colorful ceremony. That's the news at 19. We'll be back on this very channel at 22 hours with more news. See you there.